Hey guys, this video is going to be about substrate level phosphorylation, which is going to include the first two steps of cellular respiration. Uh, the first two steps being glycolysis, the second step being the Krebs cycle. And what both of these processes have in common is that they both break down glucose, which is the substrate, into product, which in this case is going to be carbon dioxide and electrons, which are going to be carried to the third step. Um, glycolysis and Krebs also make some ATP as well, which I should have mentioned. So the electrons that are released from glycolysis and Krebs go to the third step, which I'm actually going to make in a separate video called oxidative phosphorylation, which has the electron transport chain and ATP synthase. All of the electrons that are produced in the substrate level phosphorylation, glycolysis, and Krebs are going to be carried to the ETC by NADH, which is the electron carrier. So it's going to actually drop those electrons off into the electron transport chain, and then it's going to become NAD+, which will then go back, grab more electrons, and continue the cycle that way. So um, just know that NADH is what's allowing the electrons to make their way to oxidative phosphorylation, which is oxygen driven. So glucose is going to be oxidized here. It's going to release those electrons and oxygen in oxidative phosphorylation is going to eventually be reduced and accept those electrons. And that's going to help us make a lot of ATP. But for the meantime, I do just want to kind of hone in on how do we break this glucose down? Um, so it is important to note that this all connects back to enzymes. So think substrate, product, those words should sound familiar to you because that is our enzyme vocabulary. So in glycolysis, we'll see that glucose is broken down using a many, many enzymes that are each going to kind of chip away a little piece of it. I'm going to simplify it down. Um, so glycolysis uses catabolic enzymes. Krebs cycle uses catabolic enzymes, which are all going to um, break down glucose completely into carbon dioxide over a series of chemical reactions. So let's start by looking at glycolysis. So the word glycolysis actually means to break down. So think glycis means to break down and glyco means glucose. So this process means to break down glucose. And like I said before, that is going to be possible by using catabolic enzymes. So what's going to happen is glucose is going to bind to this enzyme and it's going to be broken down into two pieces. And this actually happens not in the mitochondria, but in the cytosol. So glucose is going to be the substrate that's going to bind to the active site of this enzyme. So you can see here that the glucose has come in and now it is bound to the active site of the enzyme. So what's going to happen next is that what comes out of this enzyme is going to be the products. So the products of any reaction that breaks something apart is always going to be some sort of energy is going to be released because it's catabolic and electrons are also released whenever you break bonds. Another thing I forgot to mention is that in order for glucose to be able to bind to this enzyme, it does require two ATPs activation energy. So remember that enzymes actually speed up chemical reactions by lowering the activation energy, which is why it only requires two ATP. Uh, without it, the activation energy for this would be so much higher uh, to the point where we wouldn't even be able to break down glucose and we, it would not be possible to be alive. So we can see that the glucose here, which I can actually label, goes in to the active site, binds, and now we're going to see product released. So this glucose is actually going to be broken in two. So we're going to get two molecules as the product that come from the glucose. These molecules are called pyruvic acid, and they both have three carbons a piece. So you've got three carbons here and three carbons here. So if you remember, glucose is going to be C6H12O6. So it's actually a six carbon molecule. 
So when we're looking at, okay, matter can't be created or destroyed or anything. So six carbon glucose comes in, two, three carbon pyruvates come out. Um, this together equals six carbons. So no other carbons are lost here. Um, so glycolysis actually does not release any carbon dioxide at all. Um, all of the carbons are currently stored in the two pyruvic acids, which we've just created. Um, again, anytime that you break a bond, you're going to get electrons released. And in this case, the electrons are going to be added to NAD+, uh, which is the empty version of our electron carrier. And it's going to make NADH. And that is going to travel into the electron transport chain. Uh, which is actually, I'm going to explain how that works in a different video. So besides, you know, getting our pyruvic acid, which is really honestly the main product here. Um, obviously, every time you break bonds, you get electrons. And every time you break bonds, you're going to get some energy and release and also some heat as well. So that is what is going to come out as a result of glycolysis. I went ahead and wrote all that out. So glucose is broken down into two pyruvic acids, electrons, and four ATP. We net two because two ATP go in and we get four out. You still have to take into account we had to spin two ATP to get four. So in this case, we net or we actually gain two ATP. So don't be misled by the four because... 4 minus 2 is 2. So that is going to account for the amount of ATP we actually get from glycolysis, which again happens in the cytosol. So now what's going to happen is we're going to take these two pyruvic acids and we're going to break those apart. So the pyruvic acid are made in the cytosol. And if oxygen is present in the cell, that pyruvic acid is actually going to enter the mitochondria and it's going to go right into the middle, which is the matrix. So that is where the Krebs cycle happens. So that's that very middle part of the mitochondria. And what's going to happen is again, um, instead of, you know, glucose has been broken into the pyruvate. So you can kind of think, okay, this is just the glucose molecule except for split in half. So we're going to take those two pyruvic acids and we're going to break them down um, using catabolic enzymes again. So this actually looks pretty similar to glycolysis, except for now we're breaking down a three carbon pyruvic acid instead of a six carbon glucose. So I've just abbreviated pyruvic acid PA in this picture just to help keep it simple. So first things first is that pyruvic acid is going to bind to the active site of this catabolic enzyme. So the pyruvic acid is the substrate in this particular cycle. But remember, it came from the glucose. So you can't really, this is just glucose being broken down. It's just kind of like part two of that process. So pyruvic acid is the substrate. It's going to bind to the active site. And now that's where we're at. So again, just like all things ever, whenever you break something apart, um, it's actually going to release energy, heat, um, and it's going to release some electrons. So we know we're going to get some of that out of this process as product. Um, and then also our product is going to be carbon dioxide. So three carbons are going in. So you could probably guess that CO2 being one carbon a piece, uh, three carbon dioxides are going to come out. So the products of the Krebs cycle are going to be three carbon dioxide for one of the pyruvic acids. But remember, we do have two. So all the I'm just showing one pyruvic acid going in, but there is two total. So just understand that this happens twice per glucose molecule. So for one pyruvate, you're going to get from a three carbon molecule, you're going to get one, two, three CO2. So that checks out every time we break bonds, it's going to give us some electrons are released. And in this case, they go into NADH. So they're added into NAD plus and that creates NADH and we're actually going to get three of those and it is going to create and it's actually going to go into another electron carrier called FADH2. Okay. And it's going to make one of those and both NADH and FADH2 are going to go 
to the electron transport chain, which is the next step, actually, which I'm going to show in a different video. So they're just taking those electrons that were stored in the glucose slash the pyruvic acid, and they're going to carry them to the electron transport chain. Uh, and then the last thing that is going to be released is going to be an ATP molecule. So that is going to give us um, an ATP for a pyruvate. And again, um, I can write the totals for per glucose um, down here at the bottom of the screen in a second. So just overview, pyruvic acid enters the mitochondria into the matrix from the glycolysis in the cytosol. Um, and it is going to bind to the enzymes and is going to create three CO2. It's going to create electrons, which go into our carriers, and it's going to create some ATP. So per glucose, you're going to get two pyruvic acids go in. So you're going to actually just double these values over here. So per glucose, we're going to get six CO2, six NADHs, two FADH2s, and two ATPs. So that's actually it for substrate level phosphorylation. I will note that breaking down glucose really doesn't make a lot of ATP. Uh, between glycolysis and Krebs, we've actually only made four ATP total, uh, which is not enough to survive on. So just make a note that the real important part and the connection between the Krebs cycle, glycolysis, and the oxidative phosphorylation process is it's releasing the electrons that are going to power the electron transport chain. That is really the most important part of breaking the glucose down uh, because we're not really getting enough ATP to survive. Carbon dioxide's waste. So really it's just these, these electrons that are the most valued uh, product of these reactions here. Um, so now let's take a look and see how do the electrons, how are they used in the ETC and how is that going to help us make ATP?